Give us your sense right now of where things stand in these negotiations. Well, conflicting is a good word, David. I think that um, it, is a, it is not entirely clear. I, certainly one thing is clear, they're not going to meet the March deadline that was set uh, last fall when they realized they couldn't meet the December deadline. No one's talking about the deadline, so I think that's going to come and go uh, next month. Uh, we still have a big issues around uh, rules of origin, which really have to do with the auto industry. There is uh, discussion, still not agreement on dispute resolution. That also mostly impacts the energy industry more than some of the others. Um, so those are, those are two giant issues that are still out there. Uh, lastly and less so is about this idea of a sunset or a review every five years. As you and some of the viewers know, I ran the Export-Import Bank for President Obama, and we, have a, we had a sunset, and I'm not so fond of sunsets. I think that they actually forge a lot of brinksmanship. So, so, Fred, talking about the timetable here for a moment, there is, of course, a very important Mexican election coming up this summer. If they don't make that deadline of March, does that mean, as a practical matter, we're into the fall? I think we could very easily be into the fall. It also requires that um, Trade Promotion Authority, which lapses on July 1st, would have to be extended. President Trump can extend it. He has to make a formal request to Congress for a three-year extension by April 1st. So there are a number of other deadlines that will be kicking in uh, that will give us some clue on to what direction we're taking. But let's be clear. President Trump has wanted to kill or rip up NAFTA from the start. He has, he's been anxious to do so. He hasn't done so yet, but that's clearly in his fiber, I think, what he would like to do. Having said that, does he have the political capital to do it? Well, I met with a number of the governors who you referenced just before on the show. Uh, none of them are in support of ripping up NAFTA. Uh, Lamar Alexander asked in a meeting at the White House that what senators are for it. No senators are for it. So there seems to be maybe political support amongst core supporters of President Trump, but certainly not in the political establishment, not mayors, not governors. And let's remember, mayors and governors are really important critical for their local economies more than members of Congress. And Fred, President Trump is also considering new tariffs on steel and aluminum. We know that when we saw those tariffs on washing machines and solar panels, the reaction from China was, uh, I dare say, rather muted. Uh, will these new tariffs add to the, uh, to the bilateral relationship just uh, headed to a breaking point? Well, it, it is also tricky whether it's going to be just with China or whether it will be more broadly. Uh, Korea is one of the major steel producers, so they're quite upset at being sort of thrown into that mix. Uh, you know, President Trump, you mentioned just a moment ago about moving the embassy to Jerusalem. At the moment, there's not been a lot of blowback, so he might be able, they could get away with this. It'd be unusual. Uh, generally, tariffs always have a retaliatory uh, impact, and generally in places where it will exert the most pain on us. So that remains to be seen. That's why most presidents, most administrations don't like to impose tariffs. So, so Fred, the, 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 the steel and aluminum tariffs are under so-called Section 232, the national security provision. There's another provision, Section 301, and we haven't paid much attention to that recently, right. which is the intellectual property action against China, which could be actually even more far-reaching than steel and aluminum. Without question. I think that, that, listen, China has always been a challenge. I mean, there are a number of things we are not happy with in terms of how they treat U.S. companies, intellectual property, a level playing field for bidding. China's been important for many years uh, on currency issues, uh, on the Iran issue. Uh, is important in terms of um, the South China Sea, North Korea. We have a lot of issues, so it's very hard to isolate one and not think it's going to have an impact on other interests we have with China. Yeah, they're terribly important. So at the same point, in fairness to the president, does he not have a point that, in fact, China talks a good game on open markets, but, in fact, if you look at individual products, there are a lot of restrictions on U.S. companies going in and doing business in China. Oh, without question. No, I mean, the, the president is absolutely right. Uh, and in this regard, the president, we have been treated unfairly in China. And there are issues around intellectual property, around bidding, around a, a theft of, of a technology, around the, the amount of Chinese ownership has to be in U.S. companies there. So, no, it is not a very fair place to do business. People don't enjoy doing business in China. They do it because they need to, and it's a big market. It's not because they like to do business there, I think.
Xi Jinping's top economic advisor Liu He headed to the U.S. next week. How much will these top-level talks help in mitigating the trade tensions, or could we see an all-out trade war this year? Well, I think 2017 was a quiet year. There was a lot of bluster, but nothing happened. I think in 2018, we're only six weeks in, but I think between NAFTA and these tariffs, there's going to be some action. I think that the president is hankering for some action and some specifics, and he likes things that are bold and exert a lot of pain. And uh, as I said, the moves to Jerusalem of the capital is one example, and I think we're going to see that in this trade area. What form it takes is not clear because, as we just discussed with NAFTA, there is not a lot of political support. I would say no political support for ripping up that deal. Fred, how important are these multilateral trade deals in competing against China, or can it also be done in the form of uh, two-way FTAs? You know, I know President Trump likes the idea of these of uh, bilateral. I I find, if I look at how difficult it was to get the Korea, Panama, and Colombia uh, free trade agreements through, the idea of just doing one-offs would be very challenging from a congressional point of view. But more importantly, I'm not sure that we're going to find. No country has stepped forward so far and said we want a bilateral trade deal with the United States. Because if the criteria is we have to fix our trade deficit, that's going to make it very difficult for any one country to decide they want to sign a bilateral free trade agreement with the U.S.